What is inside of Mexican jumping beans? I got my hands on five to find out. These things are found in Mexico and they are small bean pods of a host flower of a plant. That bean hardens and then falls to the ground and then some magical circumstance makes these things pop on the floor. And they don't stop for a long time. Who needs a clock when you got jumping beans? What is going on here? I've never opened up one of these things before, so I decided to open one out of the five beans to find out what's inside. I got my tweezers ready to crack one of these things open and carefully started opening up the seed. And that is when I saw something moving. It looked like there was a caterpillar living in there. And that must be why I hear tick 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 all day. Well listen, it's a good thing that it's a hobby of mine to hatch ladybugs and butterflies. This one was a morning cloak butterfly and Raffi's best friend. But seriously, hatching butterflies is like the coolest thing ever. She flew away. It's a good thing I hatched butterflies before because after I opened this bean, I thought if this is a larvae, it'll grow into a butterfly and maybe we can have a pet moth butterfly. Just look how cute this tiny little creature looks inside its home. Cause listen, if you tell me to grow a pet moth, I'm growing a pet moth. And I was wondering how these things even survive in there since the little beans are such a tiny environment for the small little creature to thrive in. And I was also wondering how they consume their food if they're stuck inside a tiny little bean. Where do they get their food? But then I learned that the larvae primarily consume the nutrients present in the seed, and that's their food. So this feeding activity triggers the movement of the jumping bean, and that's what makes them jump. How cool is that? A tiny little creature can survive in a natural symbiotic relationship with the host plant's seed. Then it all made sense to me, because I saw the little larvae moving around, eating those little hair-like structures on the bean, and I could not believe what these jumping beans did after I opened them. Because yes, they do eat the little hair-like structures, structures on the bean, but they also apparently try to weave a net around the part of the bean that I opened to actually close the structure all together. It's basically telling me that I should have left these beans closed because these little caterpillars actually wanted to stay inside. The little creature started to close up the bean with this webbing-like material and essentially what it is doing is producing silk threads using special glands in their bodies, which are primarily used for three things. One, to create insulated shelters to stay warm in colder temperatures. Two, to secure a protective place to stay out of harm's way from potential creatures who can eat them like squirrels and bunnies. Three, helping their little bodies to maneuver inside the bean more easily once it's fully closed so that they can begin their metamorphosis process from a tiny larvae into a butterfly moth chrysalis. That's just what they emerge out of as their adult with the wings. And at this point, I thought, well, maybe these things are silkworms. But I learned that they are actually not silk moths. They are house moths. So these silk threads that they produce cannot be used for human purposes, like the silk obtained from silkworms is. But I bet you, if you had enough of this webbing, you could still make things out of it. But apparently the webbing from the house moth is a lot weaker than that of the silk from the silk moths. And listen, silk moths are a whole other topic that I'm gonna eventually get into because the process of making silk is out of this world and we need to see a silk factory soon, so stay tuned for that. But it is a fact that the silk threads that the house moths produce to close the bean that I opened do in fact play a vital role in their survival. So I just let them be. But after a few weeks, I started to wonder if opening more of the beans would put the larvae to work and help them hatch faster. I did get five beans and only opened two of them. So I left the other three closed so that we can see how they do in fact hatch once they're at that stage in the metamorphosis. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take for them to hatch, but from my past experiences with butterflies, I think it'll take four to 12 more weeks. And I've got a time-lapse camera going on them daily just in case they do hatch because we got to get that on camera. Listen, nature is so weird. Just maybe I'll make a silk sweater or maybe Raph will get a nice new snack. I know we're all so fascinated by these jumping beans, so I thought I'd give you a bit more information on how the little larvae even get inside of the bean to begin with and why and how weird nature makes that happen. So we already know that the little larvae lives inside the bean and that's why they jump. But when they're warmed up, by heat from the sun or heat from body temperature, like from holding the beans in your hands for a few minutes, the larvae inside starts to wiggle and bounce and they bounce from one spot to another freely as a way of surviving. But how the actual larvae gets inside is another situation. Essentially what happens is female house moths lay their eggs on the flowers of the shrub called Sebastian Pecconiana. And when the flowers dry up, they turn into seed capsules and the eggs get deposited right inside. As the egg 
eggs hatch and the larvae begin to grow inside of that tiny bean, movement is created by contracting and relaxing and eating, making the bean jump. The moth larvae typically stay inside the bean until they reach maturity and once they're fully developed, the adult moth chews a small hole through the bean's outer shell, emerging as a moth and flying away to continue its cycle. This is where we're going to see the different process of hatching, three beans with no openings and two beans with a silk webbing to exit through. That exit hole is usually near one of the bean's ends and the only thing left for the moth to do once it emerges from its chrysalis is to find a mate and start the process anew. It really is kind of beautiful that the moth exits the bean when it's ready to move on to the next stage of its life as a moth butterfly and it has somewhere safe to live in the interim. Now we've got to wait for these things to hatch so that we can learn more about the life cycle of jumping beans and so we can finally have our pet moths. So till then, I really went to the trees to see if any beans were jumping at the base. Didn't find any. But all in all, maybe, just maybe, we should have left these things closed but I'm still happy we opened them. So stay tuned for more jumping bean videos coming soon. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe. Always remember that I love you. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>